Hi right, guys, welcome back. Um, this video is is the video I, I really should have done at the very start. Well, if anybody's been following my previous videos, you've seen me talk about how we generate test data and how we create local environments in Warrior and Azure, all with the target of using the web control with, within Power BI, Power Query. So we're at that stage now where we've generated some data. So I think now we'll actually go through and see what kind of code you need behind the scenes to make this work. Now, normally what I would do is I would create a, an Azure environment because we're not talking about that in any particular detail today. We can just use the local facilities that you get with PHP. Like most development environments, you can set a web server up and call that. It's, it's relatively straightforward to, to do within within PHP. So usually you, you'll need two, two web uh, two web two, two uh, command lines open really to do this because we're going to start the web server in one and we'll do some work from the other the other side so within php and i'll just show you i'm using php version 8 so we can do that so we'll just set the server up so we it's the switch is is capital s we'll say a local host and if you've got something running on port 80, 80, 80 you can just use another another port so i'll just use 2000 uh that's essentially it so if we do that the actual web service starts uh you can specify more paths on here so you can lock down where it works but it is there's not much point for what we're going to do so we send that now a little web server is now running if we just uh go to a, a normal browser we can have a look at this now We'll, we'll actually have a look at the, the code first. This code PQ load CSV is what I've written to do this. Now, I thought I'll just go through how how file types work within browsers. It does vary slightly between browsers, and you've probably seen when you've used them whether you get something displayed, whether you get it uh, the option to download it to to a local storage or to open something like Excel, for example. Now. If I was to run this this website on my own PC because I've got Excel installed, it will give me the option to do that. But I don't have Excel on this machine, so it's it's fairly it's a fairly vanilla machine. So it's not gonna it's not gonna quite work out as you see. But well, I'll talk you through what goes on, so we'll see what happens. So in, in the code, it's very very simple code. We uh, we have a command line. You know, you listen the you know when you type a browser in. We have a parameter called file so that that's the name of the local file that we're going to open to do that so within within our little uh, folder let's have a look we have some some files just some simple csv files which i'm going to play around with show you how that works we'll just close that for, for now uh yeah so we we actually decode the command line forget this these things, the ID, and where we'll talk about those in a, in a in a in a in a time. So we we get the name from the from the command line. It's in dollar name. We'll just log that to the output of the uh, the web server, which you can see that. And then we'll open that file. So if I can find me, me F open. There we are. So we do dollar name for read, and then we read it. And we're saying you're a, you're a CSV file. So PHP just lets you read CSV files. That ID is not like an, an ID as you'd see for a file ID. It's the input delimiter. As I say, we'll, we'll have a little chat about that in a bit. So we just read through the file. And I've just given the option to have an output delimiter as well. So you, you can ignore all those parameters. It's just if you had an input parameter of, say, tab, and you want to change it to semicolon, you, you can do that. You don't have to do anything anywhere remotely that sophisticated in this this kind of uh, procedure. So. We have here header. This 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 is an HTTP what used to be called mind types, now called content content types. So you're basically saying to the to the software that you're communicating with, whether it be a browser or a hard coded piece of code, uh, a, a fat client for example, it'll say like I'm sending you text files and they're in the format CSV. So you might actually get text slash XML or text dot text if it's just a text file. You would see things like image slash gif, image slash jpeg, and whatever. So it's just it's it just is just the handshake between the server and the client to say what file types I can handle. You would normally tell the server, depending on what kind of code you would you were writing, you could say, hey, I can actually handle gif files, and they'll say, okay, yes, yeah, so you can have those gifs. So it's it's it is just a handshake, and it's fine, but it does have an impact on how you actually see the data in in your file in your in the browser. So if we leave the contents on, 
on just save that. Must be something else I've got in Chrome's on save somewhere. And we'll just go over quickly to a browser. So here's the code I've written PQ load CSV, which is this. That's our local host on port 2000. I opened it. Just a small file to go called base data. And this, this random string here, which we'll talk about in a, in a little bit. So we're expecting the browser to be able to handle the text slash CSV files. So we'll, we'll download it. And you'll see we've directly popped up a little box there. So it has actually downloaded it. If I just send that again, it'll do version one, and that's how you would normally see that work. So if I was to now just just take out the header, so the the default coming down now is I think it's my text.html. So it actually the browser the browser thinks it's getting the HTML. So if we go over to here and we'll just send that again, there we go. So that is the file. So we we don't get that that interaction to do that. This has an impact on how it works in Power Query, so I just thought I'd just just go through that for now. We'll just go and have a quick look at the web browser, at the uh, the web server we set up. So some nice little tracing goes on, and I've output that line there. So you got the uh, the error log. Let's open the name. So we have that to open there. So if if you needed to do some debugging, if you're using PHP as a web server, you can just display it to the console, and you'll see those. Take take it out before it goes live, because that will probably end up in your your apache or your iis logs depending how you have your web your web uh, server is configured so it is a uh, good practice to take that out fav icon yeah just this one of those things if you use the browser you know you get your little your little icon it's usually up here but we haven't got one so we're not doing that you'll see that loads of times so you can have a little look through see it goes on that's the get that's been submitted it'll submit posts to more of it so you can see what's going on so so that's it. So no no need to really go and set Apache up IS on your local machine. You can just do that. So we'll now we'll have a look at how we'd actually get this to uh, to work in Power BI. We've seen Power BI before, desktop. So we'll tell it let's get data from another source. It's very slow sometimes. So these are all the data sources you can use. I think in the last video. We looked at using a file type of CSV just to show how how a million record file showed up in there. So there's lots and lots of things you can you can read directly. It's a very very useful piece of software and it's free, so it's it's a good thing to have on your machine. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, SharePoint Dynamics. There are even a few ones. For example, this is a Ketty HR, it's an Italian HR platform, still in beta, but it's there to use. Now the one we're going to use is is web so we'll just type that in there we go and we'll say yeah let's please let's let's get that and then we just have to submit a url so you'll see when we did the uh the browser we use that as the url we can use exactly the same url in here so we just cut and paste that in doing okay uh, trundles away All this stuff that goes on in Power BI. Now, interesting. So we have the HTML code and displayed text. Now this is because in the code at the moment, oops, I haven't told that it's actually a CSV file. So we'll just just save that back, just so we remember when we do it again. So you can actually have a look at these. So you can see the actual page. It's all the stuff that gets wrapped around it. So there's our data still sitting there. The data is of little relevance. It's just some some rubbish I found in a in a file. So you can have a look at the displayed text. So that's what you get, and you you got your little web views. You you can just generally just play around with it and see what's going on. But it's 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 not very elegant to to do that. So what we'll do is we'll we'll cancel it. Let's say we we've saved that. We'll go back into Power BI. Channels away, and uh, we just type in web again. We'll go back to web. We'll put our little URL in again. And I'm just going to change this again. I will we'll talk about that in a few minutes about why why that's there. So we'll just say, go to the, the local website, get that file based data CSV, and we'll get it. It'll do its little bit of churning again. And there, quite happily, it's displayed it as CSV. So power 
query Power BI is actually looking to say, ah, oh, what kind of data are you send me? And this is really, yep, your CSV file. No problem, so thank you very much. So we'll just load the data in. Just doing this little bits and pieces again. And there's our seven rows of, of data in there. What I like to do usually when I do this, I'm not a great Power BI expert. I just like to have a look at the, the data. So I just, I just open up a little table view. And just click on the file. I'm sure there must be a way to do all of this, but there we go. So there's our little there's our little file. So there's all our our CSV data being loaded in. So that's that's all pretty good. We're moving ahead. And it's in you it is just data. So you got your filters and whatever you can you can do anything you like with that data. So that's our that's our code. Now I'll just go through what I was talking about before I said I would go through this. So I've essentially you have the um, what we'll do is we'll just we'll just type it we'll just put this in here. So there's the URL we've got in there. And I've also got two other parameters is the input delimiter and the output delimiter. So the input delimiter will default to a comma. So you do that so you don't have to specify that if it's a comma file. If it's tabs or well the tabs quite difficult to do, but if it's a semicolon file or a colon file, you would just put the colon onto the command line as ID equals colon. The output delimiter becomes, if it's not specified, defaults to the input delimiter, or you can specify another one. So you can say output delimiter equals a colon. So the input one could be a semicolon, the output one could be a colon. We we could have a little look at that actually and just see how that how that manifests in um, within the code. So we'll just we'll just remove that for now. Let's get a bit more tidy, save that back. And I've also got a fourth parameter, which is uh, which we're not using within the code, and I've just called it rand. It doesn't have any particular name. So there's the example there where we've done it, where we have the input delimiter and the output delimiter. If we do the random, it actually generates a new data source within um, within Power Query, and that's really useful for when you're developing. Because when you are developing code, you might be missing columns out, putting columns in, and when you do refreshes and things like that. The uh, Power Query can get a little bit upset. It's, well, it's not upset. It's actually telling you oh, you haven't supplied me all the data, or there's too much data. So, but if you if you give that little value, it just looks like it's an HTML random value. It just really means internally within within the within the code of uh, Power Query. It says oh, I'll just list you as a separate thing. It, it doesn't care. It just uses the whole name as a particular data source, which is which is very useful, really. Right. Let's just see if we can have a quick look. At how how we'd actually specify the the different parameters. So if I, uh, what should we do? In fact, what I like to do when we do this is to close it down. I like to start afresh. So we're not totally on, not or fair with how it works. So we'll just we'll just get that again. Whoops, yeah, I've got a shortcut there. So we get Power BI. It's quite a fast machine. This is running on, but it still takes a little while to to run. There we go. We don't need to get started. So we'll get our data from another source. There we go. So now we do web again. There we go. So we'll put our, our URL there. Now see it. We can specify the input delimiter. There's a comma. Uh, we can say that the Output delimiter is a semicolon. Uh, we'll say OK. Power Query should do its thing now. And you can see there the delimiter, it said, yeah, you're a semicolon. So it's actually recognized that it's a different file, a different uh, file format. So we, then we can we can load, do all your transform, do your load, whatever you want to do. So that's, uh, that's just an example, really. If you were to write production code, you'd maybe do it a different way. You would know what was going on. So you probably will be a scheduled job to do this, but uh, I just thought I'd just go through that. Now, one of the very odd things about how it works is even though we've, we've told explicitly that the data is in fact uh, CSV and should be treated that way, it doesn't always uh, recognize that. So I've got a few little files here. What have we gone? So I've got, uh, so you saw in the, in, the, in the base data, we actually had all the columns were nicely 
all that nicely laid out and had the headers. Now I've got one here called Fail Three. So if I was to just go back to Power BI, and we'll do a uh, let's try get data. Yeah, web. I know I said I usually like to take it down, so we'll just do that a bit more. So the file will change that to Fail Three. Fail three dot csv it's okay so you can see now it's actually ignoring our column headers so it's actually calling them column one column two column three and there's our actual real column headers which is a little bit it's a bit odd really so if we if we just try it again i have another file here which is called something like uh, works for so we'll do that so if we go to the web uh, there we are so put our URL in there we go and we'll just change this to works for works for dot oh, no Being clever there works for dot csv uh, okay that and now it's quite happy so it must be something to do with the quantity of the columns I've, i haven't been able to work out exactly how that works so if somebody has got an idea how that works if you could put it in the comments that would be great I, I will continue working on it to see how that how that hangs together but uh, it's just interesting really and i, I like to show these things as i've, as I've found them as been doing the research it's, it's, it's awful when you follow a video and then you go and you go and do something and it just doesn't work you can't you can't see why but at least i can give you an indication that other people <laughs> do get that problem so we can we can have a look at that so we'll just cancel that we'll do that now when we're talking about the the data we have our base data here which is the data i was just showing you earlier on so there's our column headers in there as well so i've actually got a, a file called calls mismatch I've actually put these in alphabetical app. Well, I put in ABC because uh, I think Power Query it, it it likes to show you things in in order. And do that. So we'll just have a quick look at this this file. So we'll do calls mismatch. No, I won't cut and paste that because I'll lose me. I'll lose my uh, my paste from here. So we do get data web. Just get used to doing that way, really, shouldn't I? Okay, so we do that. Uh, add that. And we say calls mismatch.csv and we'll have a look at that. There we go. So that's that's reasonably happy it's done that. Now you'll notice that I've got a column here called I I one more. So if we go and have a look at the data, oops, we'll actually open the data up in code. So if I do a code, there we go. So we have that. Uh, if we actually count them through, there is actually one more here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine column headers, but only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data items. So it's working. It's not erroring and saying, "Oh, oh yes, you uh, you haven't you haven't you've well you've got a mismatch. You haven't got the right number of columns." It'll get it gets a bit funny. So if if we just add something in here now, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll just put some data on the end. So let's say comma B. Ah, uh, sometimes Visual Studio Code. <laughs> D. Comma E. <laughs> Leaving for some reason. F G H Oops. Come on, I so there we go. So we'll just save that file. We'll go back to Power BI now. Because we've changed the data, we'll just have to get it back in again. So we'll just do a cancel on there, we'll get another data. So we'll just load in our calls mismatch. Come on. There we go, so we go to web. Calls 
mismatch at CSV. Say OK. Bad query, drag it in. Now it's, it has ignored that data, hasn't it? So it's, 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 it's really, really very delicate, the whole thing. Nine rows loaded. So we've done that. So if we just have a look at the data, so we'll just get a out of the table again. Oh, well. Sometimes you click, sometimes you drag. Uh, yep, so it hasn't actually showed the yeah, there are well I see it has got the data in there, so it's kind of really weird. So it's a thing you've got to watch out for really doing the whole thing. Now what you can do is you can overwrite the whole thing. So we just do a get data again on web. Let me put this in and we change this again to the calls. Mismatch. And we Give a different data source, so we've got calls mismatch, different random number. There, quite happily displays it. So there's there's a bit of caching going on. So as I say, you get a different data source name. So it looks like this whole this whole string is regarded as the data source. So you can say, yeah. So we'll we'll load that data. We got if we have that data. So what we can do we get all of those in there, which we that down. Yeah, it's all in there. So what we can do is we'll change that A and we'll just change that to a different value. Oops. Yeah, so we'll do we'll just say a more data. Just so you can see that. Save that. And if you just want to update the data, you just click the refresh and hopefully. And we'll just go away, do its thing, and there we are. So there's our data. If you don't do that refresh, whenever you come into the file, it'll always be the same. So that's that's basically it. So just a little bit of web server. You can you can load a, a novel file as I call it. So it could be connecting to a mainframe. You could be generating the data from scratch. Really, you could be generating it from all kinds of different different uh, data sources pull it all together or where there's a gap within power bi so that's that's it so it's been about five or six videos getting us up to this point so if you watched it and you've liked it please please subscribe do a like a, a comment or click the bell all the good the good youtube things and uh and that's probably it for now on this little and uh this little world i just thought it was an interesting thing to look at loading loading data in where you don't have a normal loading pattern. Um, if you could just load the data in, if you have the CSV already created, you're probably better off loading it in through the file system. That'd be easier. I mean, I haven't looked at loading a million rows in through the web. I, I, I might do that. I might just do that as a as an, an adjunct to this this video, just a very short one. Uh, but this is kind of freestanding. So your best bet is to use the web interface if you need to do, as I say, do that particular processing. If it is just reading an existing file, I would read it. And you can you can talk directly to the file system or you can talk to uh, Azure Blobs. It's not much in the way of AWS. You might be able to do S3. I haven't actually looked at that. But you should be able to get that data in somehow. And if it was an S3 and there was an S3 connector or an, an Alibaba connector, you could use the web control to just go and do that, to go and read S3, use whatever SDKs are available. So that, that should save save some time and money and uh, a bit of grief for people. So that's it. So uh, thanks for watching. As I say, guys, if you can like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the good, the good YouTube things, appreciate that. I'd appreciate that. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.